Chapter 27b Review The female reproductive system was decidedly more complicated than the male reproductive system. For instance, we had two major hormones that fluctuated between the follicular and the luteal phases of the ovarian cycle. At the same time, the uterus was going through a period of growth and other changes. Those were the proliferative and the secretory and lastly the menstrual phase. Otherwise, the gonads were similar. There were erectile tissue filled external genitalia structures and a number of different exocrine glands which produced different secretions during arousal and orgasm. Furthermore, we discussed breast tissue, paying particular attention to what anatomy and physiology about the breasts could help us to understand the purpose and reliability of mammograms. At birth, the ovaries contain all of their oogonia. These are similar to the stem cells found in the testes, only all of these cells have begun the meiosis process meaning they are no longer stem cells, but have begun to differentiate. They have all halted in an early step in meiosis and will not continue until puberty. At puberty, some of the oogonia continue to develop, going through later stages of meiosis. To aid in this, follicle cells begin to grow around the eggs. As more and more follicular cells grow, we give different names to the developing follicle. A primary follicle has one layer of cells surrounding the egg. A secondary has two layers. Months later, a vesicular follicle may form, which has so many cells that a big fluid-filled gap begins to develop. These follicle cells secrete estrogen. So as we get more follicle cells, there is more estrogen being released into the bloodstream. This is the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. One to two of the vesicular follicles will become dominant. And when there is an LH and FSH surge, ovulate. At this point, the remaining follicle cells will turn into the corpus luteum and begin secreting estrogen and progesterone. Progesterone inhibits the production of GnRH from the brain which will in turn inhibit the production of LH and FSH. Without more LH and FSH, no further ovulations can occur. This is the basis for birth control pills. By preventing the production of LH, birth control pills, even those containing estrogen, can keep estrogen levels relatively low. Similarly, if progesterone were to be given to a male, it would inhibit GnRH production, which would in turn inhibit LH production, which would inhibit his testosterone production. This is called chemical castration and is sometimes used on violent sex offenders upon their re-entry into society to reduce the risk of their re-offending. Because estrogen and progesterone also have effects on the uterus, a constant supply of estrogen and progesterone would prevent or limit menstruation. Remember that the functional zone of the uterus has to grow thick under the control of high levels of estrogen. And then menstruation is triggered when levels of estrogen and progesterone drop. If we never get the sharp increase in estrogen levels, and we never get the drop afterwards, this can stop or minimize the menstrual cycle. Lastly, while we're on this picture, it's possible for endometrial cells to be pushed up a fallopian tube rather than out the cervix during menstruation. At this point, we would call those endometrial cells endometriosis. They will still be under the control of estrogen and progesterone. During the ovarian cycle, as estrogen levels rise, the endometrial cells will grow, which is what they do. At this point, the endometriosis could be putting pressure on the fallopian tubes, causing pain. Towards the end of the luteal phase, when estrogen and progesterone levels drop, 
these endometrial cells will begin to die, and as they do, release inflammatory molecules, which can cause severe pain and discomfort. This is one of the hallmark symptoms of endometriosis. The uterus is designed to withstand a little bit of inflammatory pain, but the fallopian tubes, or if the endometrial cells were to fall into the abdominal cavity, these areas are much more sensitive to inflammatory molecules. One of our main treatments for endometriosis is birth control pills. Because they keep the levels of estrogen and progesterone constant, the endometrial tissue, wherever it's located, should not grow significantly large, but it should also not die during the menstrual phase, releasing the inflammatory molecules.